All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from K Hux Nation. And for today's episode, this is going to be a Magic the Gathering episode, uh, which I am absolutely convinced that this may be one of the best decks, one of the top decks in the format. Okay. Um, and that is going to be Just Guy Control. Now, just to provide a little bit of context, okay, uh, for those of you that may not play competitive uh, standard in Magic the Gathering uh, nearly as much or you haven't played in a while or whatnot, uh, just to give some context, okay, there's essentially for the past couple, what's it called, seasons, I guess? Uh, sets the past couple sets or so uh, Esper control has more or less been Kind of like the best deck. Okay, the most played deck All right, and in my opinion one of the whole reasons why Esper control is so good or not Or maybe not not so good. I say no. How do I word this? Well, I guess I could say that. One of the, there's a few reasons why Esper Control is so good. A large reason is because of Teferi. Teferi has a passive ability that says, or static ability that says, each opponent can cast spells only any time they could cast a sorcery. Meaning that it can completely shut down instant speed interactions. Uh, or casting at that point. Okay, so even if the enemy has a Teferi, uh, and they plus one so that they can use things that... Uh, they can give their cards flash and use them at instant speed. If you have your own Tefir in the field, it just makes that ability completely useless. Um, that means that new cards, such as like that that one wolf that flashes in, is useless. Um, it completely shuts down most control decks because most control decks like to play things at instant speed, typically. Um, but one of the main things that helped make black or Esper Control so good, was the color black. Black just had access to so many things that no other color was able to deal with. Most notably, how it's able to interact with Planeswalkers. Because as of right now, there's what, like, 36 Planeswalkers or something in the format? And I, I can pretty much say without a doubt that Planeswalkers are probably by far the most difficult thing to interact with as of right now in in the game okay just because there's or at least in standard just because there's so many planeswalkers usually if there's only one planeswalker on the field on the enemy side of the field it's not that bad but once they start having two or three planeswalkers on the field at the exact same time it starts getting really difficult to keep up at any point in time and that's where black really shines okay um the two cards that most notably uh help black the most which i completely believe is more or less the sole reason why black is getting used so much right now is because of exclusively two cards which is the elder spell and command the dread horde okay i firmly believe that it's almost purely because of these two cards sure there's other cards as well that help out in black but these are the two most dominant cards in the color right now which is more or less the main reason why black is getting used so much. All right. Um, the Elder spell is a two mana, is a for black and black for a two mana cost. It's a sorcery. Destroy any number of target planeswalkers. Choose a planeswalker you control. Put two loyalty counters on it for each planeswalker destroyed this way. Basically, it's the only card in the format right now that can indiscriminately destroy any number of planeswalkers so regardless if they have 15 planeswalkers on their field <laughs> lord like help you if that ends up being a, a situation uh you can easily destroy them all with the elder spell easy and for only two mana of that too uh the second spell is command the dread horde which is typically one of those like bomb cards that will more or less probably end up winning you the game uh, it's a six mana cost spell for four generic and black black for six total sorcery choose any number of target creature and or planeswalker cards in graveyards command the dread horde deals damage to you equal to the total for mana cost of those cards put them on the battlefield under control so one of the things that made esper control so good is that it would basically just be chock full of removal um, just kill anything that you happen to cast out 
and sooner or later they would be able to win using command the dread horde and just bring your stuff from the grave or their old planeswalkers from the grave and just kill you with your own stuff okay that would be one of the major threats about command the dread horde and that's that's what would uh help elspir control uh win games a good portion of the time because realistically elspir control didn't really have many very many win conditions at all whatsoever Okay, maybe it only had like two creatures in a deck and it might kill you with those slowly, but overall the deck is super slow and only has like a handful of win conditions. Okay, now no other deck was really able to compete with Esper Control up until the newest set right now, uh, Magic Horse set 2020 finally came out. And with that set came with so many nice little goodies uh into the set to finally help com not only combat esper control uh, but so also gave so many of the other colors that didn't have nearly as much utility to play against esper control but also help play against other planeswalkers too which was what the what's what which is what these uh the format really needed at the time okay because before m20 came out i believe on uh, MTG Goldfish, Esper Control had like a 22-25% play rate <laughs> in terms of how many people were playing it in the meta, which is really big. Like, that's a huge portion. That means like at least one in four people is probably going to end up be playing Esper Control. Um, but now with the release of M20, it's all the way down. Let's put this on the screen. Now with the release of M20, uh, Esper Control is down to like 9% now. Okay. Uh, and some other new decks have popped up, including, of course, like I expected, Teamer Ele Elementals, uh, just slowly popping up at the bottom. All right, now, enough about that. I didn't come here to talk about Esper Control the entire video. I came to talk about Jeskai Control, because I firmly believe Jeskai Control is probably, if not the best deck or at least one of the best decks to play in the format right now in terms of the meta and i've more or less put together a deck list that i've been playing for a while now and it's becoming really consistent it's really good uh competitively and i want to share with you guys okay um i'm only missing a few cards so i'm missing Tukatli honor guard and i don't have all of the appropriate dual lands so i'm using a couple like tap lands so uh life lands and scry lands in the, in the meantime um but ignoring mana base let me show you the actual deck itself and let me explain it to you because it's it's real it's honestly really good uh and it synergizes very well too and i'll i'll explain in a sec too like how it compares to like against other decks in the format as well so we have opt it's just most opt is mostly there just for you know drawing um just to provide some context i developed this deck almost like a uh I, I when i developed this deck what i essentially did was i took a look at esper control and because there's only one difference between esper control and just just kind of control which is where you're using red instead of black and i firmly believe with the new release of so many really good red spells in m20 uh red has a notable advantage compared to black does just because of the fact that red is able to be a lot more aggressive and with with the use of uh chandra acolyte of flame Shaka, chandra acolyte of flame has so much good synergy with especially with their minus two and uh to be able to reuse your instants and sorceries with cmc3 or less it's so good um her uh, second ability, the middle one, to create two elementals, it's really good at applying pressure and just getting in some cheeky damage if you need to. And obviously the first ability, most decks don't really get to use the first ability too often, like to its full usage. But at least in this deck, you can at least get some pretty good, good usage out of it. Um, anyways, so basically what I did was I took the shell of Esper Control and I just brought it over to... Uh, Jeskai Control, and I whatever black cards that Esper Control had, I just swapped it out with what I deemed would be like the equivalent in the red version and, and threw it into Jeskai Control, okay? Uh, one of the main things that I noticed though when I did that is the fact that because I'm not using the, the, the big Teferi, 
Let me pull this over here. Come on, load. Uh, let's see. Because I'm not using Te uh, Teferi Hero of Dominaria, I'm not using this. Personally, I don't think it's... It's a it's a decent card, but I don't think it's the greatest card in the world, to be honest. Uh, because I'm not using this, I lack a little bit of the card draw that uh, Esper Control has compared to my Jeska Control. So I had to swap some cards out and throw in a little bit more uh, draw spells. Okay, okay, there. All right, so that's kind of why I have Op there, especially since it's good, nice to have it earlier turn two. Uh, we have Search for Escanta, of course, uh, just like Esper Control. Chandra's Triumph is really good in this deck okay uh now normally other decks will have lightning strike in their deck personally i prefer chandra's triumph over lightning strike especially if you have chandra's in your deck um because not only can it still hit both creatures and planeswalkers the most notably planeswalkers but if you have a chandra on the field it goes from doing 3 damage to 5 damage instead, effectively doing the same exact thing as what Fry does uh, right now in the format, which came out in M20. Let me pull up Fry. Alright, where's Fry? Fry, okay. Uh, Fry is a 2 uh, CMC red spell instant, can't be countered, deals 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker that's white or blue. Okay, so... Obviously, Fry is really good, but only against white or blue decks, okay, or white and blue planeswalkers and creatures. So it's limited in its usage. So it ends up typically being a sideboard card. Uh, however, with Chandra's Triumph, you can still consistently get that five damage off while not being tied to what color the planeswalker or creature is. Um... And that's what I like about it, okay? it's What's even cooler about it is the fact that if you have Chandra Acolyte of Flame in the graveyard, you can actually cast Chandra's Triumph one turn. Then on a future turn, when you have Shand when you can cast Chandra's uh, Acolyte of Flame, you can minus two her, cast Chandra's Triumph from your grave, and because you are guaranteed to have that Chandra on the field because you just use her ult to recast it from the grave, it will do five damage. <laughs> so you could effectively like uh on their turn cast Chandra's Triumph, kill a creature, then on your turn, cast Acolyte of Flame, alter, kill another creature, even if it's a beefy creature, or kill a planeswalker easily with Chandra's Triumph. Okay, it's it's a really good card. Um We have Dovin's Veto, there's no reason why sh for me to not run Dovin's Veto um over Negate. Again, it's it's almost like a shell of Esper Control, but with red, and it makes it a little bit better, in my opinion. I threw in uh, two copies of Sinister Sabotage just, be <coughs> just because of the fact that I felt like, uh, without the little bit extra counter spell in the deck, I felt like I wasn't doing enough control, and sometimes like it felt bad uh, not being able to counter a particular creature, um, or sometimes... I don't draw Dovin's Veto uh, and a Planeswalker gets through or something or just something in particular doesn't get through just because of the fact that I didn't have Dovin's Veto in my hand. And sometimes even if it's against like an aggro deck, uh, Dovin's Veto doesn't do anything. Uh, on top of the fact that to help with that kind of card draw mentality, uh, I like having the Surveil there. A lot of people are using Absorb right now when I see like these mirror matches against other Jeskai Control decks, and I usually end up winning in the Control uh, Jeskai Control ma uh, mirror match. Um, I see a lot of decks using Absorb, but personally, I prefer Sinister Sabbath Shots just because I want to be able to dig a little bit if I need to. So it kind of helps, even though it's not directly card draw, uh, it helps be able to filter through my deck a lot easier. All right, so those are the two counter spells that I have. I'll show you my sideboard in a sec. Uh, Center Sabotage stays in the deck though. Dovin's Veto is the one that's probably going to end up getting swapped in and out depending on what the enemy's running. All right. So we have three copies of Chandra Eclat of Flame. I kind of already talked about it a little bit. It is super good in the deck because um, not only can you recast pretty much most of the instant sorceries in your grave, ex excluding the counter spells, of course. Okay, uh, but it's also a really good card at applying pressure. Uh, 
which is honestly really good against control it it's just a, it's just free damage you literally just sit there and just uh you just use its second ability and just hit them with elementals every turn without having to do anything and you just pass turn you don't have to cast anything you can just smack them with creatures every turn great card and you also have the threat of being able to recast something from your grave too at any given one of your turns so it's really good card i have fight with fire now one of the main difficulties when making Jessica control was trying to figure out what could I possibly use as a replacement of the Elder spell that Black has in the form of Red. All right, and one of, I think one of the best, if not the best, solution I came up with was Fight with Fire, just because of the fact that uh, if you can kick it, you can do ten damage divided among any amount you want. Okay, now granted that is like seven extra mana greater compared to the elder spell but it's not that big of a difference because of how much burn and how much more aggressive jessica can the control jessica control deck is in general um i don't have to worry about it as much okay whereas because of the fact that the esper control is so much slower um, and only has a select amount of cards that can actually directly deal with Planeswalkers, it has to rely on the Elder Spell. Whereas, because I'm playing Jeskai, I have Red, I have so much burn, more, so much more burn um, that I, especially in the form of, like, my Planeswalkers, for example, that I can actually hit the, uh, and with Chandra's Triumph too, I can just hit upon his Planeswalkers way more often without having to rely on Fight with Fire. So... I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about Planeswalkers nearly as much. But that option is there. Fight with Fire ends up being... Uh, most A good portion of time, it's... I find this to be a way more versatile option compared to the Elder Spell. Because the Elder Spell only kills Planeswalkers. Whereas Fight with Fire, at its base form for 3 mana without kicking it, I can at least kill a beefy creature or annoying or it's a creature on the opponent's side of the field for five damage for only three mana too which is really good and then if i choose to kick it i can do a huge amount of damage in the form of 10 uh damage and split up however much i want okay against control uh you'll normally only kick it when fighting against control because that's more that's most likely going to be a situation where you can actually ac safely accumulate nine mana uh consistently okay against other decks you're mostly probably gonna end up using it as just removal against creatures uh, but against control is when i tend to most consistently actually be able to kick it all right and people don't expect to fight with fire either uh, if you have teferi on the field before you use fight with fire while you're using fight with fire they can't even counter spell it because teferi stops them from using counter spells um, or countering it in general unless they have like a creature on the field or something uh so a good portion of the time against control i fight with fire actually ends up being a win condition because instead of because uh i would have already killed all their planeswalkers with all my other burn of the deck and that i can most of the time end up just shooting them 10 in the face <laughs> with fight with fire and even better if you have teferi on the field and you plus one them you can actually use fight with fire kicked on their turn too you can just pass your turn and be like at the end of your turn i'm gonna shoot you for 10 <laughs> and i'm just like well i can't do anything about that um i've won quite quite a good number of games with just fight or fire like that um cool part is too you can still cast fight or fire from your grave as well with chandra so even if you don't get to uh kicker i don't know if you, I, I i haven't tried it yet but i believe you can kick it from the grave too uh but you can still recast it from the grave as well. Anyways, we have Teferi in here. Obviously, if you're running blue-white, there's almost no reason for you not to run Teferi. Teferi is probably one of the most, like, BS cards in the format, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, the minus three is great tempo play. Uh, bounce whatever they just cast back at them, and you get a free card uh, draw out of it. And the plus one's really nice, too, especially in the, some of the removal that I have in the deck. Uh, which goes into Definite Clarion. Definite Clarion is one of the board wipes I have in the deck. Uh, for the first mode, deals three damage to each creature. And so, yeah. So this is one of the removal in the deck. Uh, you can recast Definite Clarion with Chandra as well, uh, which again helps is 
partially why Chandra is just so good. You can basically board wipe him. Then if they spam more creatures the next turn, you can board wipe them again <laughs> using the same card from your grave without having to do anything from your hand. It's it's really good. Uh, we have a single copy of Ixalan's Binding in here. Uh, I have this here just in case. I have a single copy of uh, Definite Clarion in my sideboard, depending on the matchup. But I like having that single copy of Ixalan's Binding just in case the, the enemy is running something that's giving me a little bit of difficulty to uh, play against. Um, I'd say the most notable card that I tend to struggle against the most, uh, which I don't have too much trouble now anymore uh, after the changes I made to the deck, but will probably give you the most pressure is Nissa, uh, the five mana cost one, how it turns it land turns their lands into elementals and they smack you. That's probably the most one I, I end up uh ends up being the most annoying the most. But at the very least, Ixalan's Bind is a nice way to help guarantee it like, oh, I want them to stop casting any of those annoying cards. If the enemy has a Teferi, I want them to stop casting Teferi. I don't want them to play Teferi anymore. Ixalan's binding Teferi. They have uh, Nicol Bolas, get Nicol Bolas. They can't cast Nicol Bolas anymore. It's it's honestly a pretty broken and oppressive card, to be honest. Uh, so I, I have a single copy of this in uh, in the main board. I think I have one more copy in the sideboard, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so I have two more two copies of Chemistry's Insight in the deck. Again, this is just going, playing into the fact that I just want to make sure I have at least a decent enough amount of card draw in the deck at least a consistent amount so that way i'm not just like burning everything out and then i have to wait multiple turns which is what it used to happen before i had i threw this in there uh right now we have two creatures of the deck there's only two creatures which is elite guard mage i have two copies of this this is in the base deck okay and then i have a couple creatures in the sideboard depending on the matchup and this card is essentially almost being like the uh it's going to be my just guy version of the uh, Basilica Bell Haunt that Esper runs. Okay. It's basically running as the my Jeskai version of it. Okay, so Basilica Bell Haunt is a four mana cost card. When it's, it says when it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card and you gain three life. Um, and my Elite Guard Mage is almost like the exact opposite of that where one. I draw a card and I gain three life instead. Okay. Uh, so it's just a nice creature it has flying too, which helps hit people uh, or fly over creatures to hit planes walkers if I need to as well. The the life gain helps out sometimes, um, and it's also again just an extra form of card draw in the form of a creature. So it helps out there. And depending on the matchup, I can choose to swap it out for something else if needed. We have three copies of Cleansing Nova in the deck uh, with some with. Ah, with how much cheap oh you can't see it but it says uh destroy all creatures or oh, well there's two modes one of them is destroy all creatures the second mode is destroy all artifacts and enchantments okay if i like okay that's what it says <laughs> all right and it's five mana i have three of these in the deck uh because of how much cheap removal i have in the form of burn i don't have to worry about constantly needing this card uh that i will very reliably end up getting to five mana uh and be able to use this if needed um the the fact that i can destroy enchantments is very nice too because sometimes you do end up playing against um weird janky variations of existing decks that are like you know kind of uh experimenting with different cards that came in like m20 or whatnot such as like the the ley lines for example i've seen a few decks that are experimenting with the ley lines and being able to just like murk all of the enchantments on the field that are bothering you with cleansing nova ends up being really helpful sometimes and of course the board wipe which is to destroy all creatures is very useful too especially against mid-range decks uh any blue green decks that run like hydras or whatnot or big creatures in general, maybe like teamer elementals that like to get bigger with Omnath. Great card to just help make sure you can board wipe everything. Okay, so just good board wipe. And then the the last card in the deck before I talk about lands is Chandra Awakened Inferno. This is essentially going to be one of the main uh, win conditions in the deck, which is with her first ability, 
obviously. Okay. She also serves as a very good way as another board wipe too. So you so you effectively have like three board wipes in the deck, which is Chandra herself, Cleansing Nova, and Deafening Clarion, which Deafening Clarion can of course be recast because of Chandra Acolyte of Flame whenever you need to. So you have just like constant removal on the field of needed. Uh but her minus her ultimate, her minus X also helps us really nice removal against enemy planeswalkers too if you need that uh so it's all and she can't be countered as well which really screws over control decks uh so overall like she's one of the main win conditions sometimes elite guard mage combined with uh chandra echo flame is a win, a win condition fight with fire can be a win condition on its own as well um yeah there's there's a few ways you can win and they're almost all related to <laughs> red cards. <laughs> uh, so it's it's very good. All right. So let's see. My lands. Okay. So I have three basic lands in the deck. I only have one cop, one plains, one island, and one mountain. Um, and I have three copies of Evolving Wild. Now I do this just because of the fact that sometimes uh, there are moments where I do need that one extra plains or mountain uh, on on the field and be able to tutor out guaranteed tutor it out with an evolving wilds uh helps out so much more on top of the fact it also helps filter the deck a little bit so which just helps make it easier to draw some other cards that are not lands uh so that's that's kind of why i have this there all right and then the rest are pretty much just dual lands okay you want as many like uh shock and check lands as much as possible uh obviously of course once the rotation happens this fall uh the check lands will rotate out we will still have the shock lands but the check lands will rotate out and instead you would want to use the scry lands instead uh so cards such as like uh where is it temple of triumph for example the ones that let you scry oh you can't read it okay the ones that let you scry those are the ones you want to replace them with, okay? But ideally, you at least for now, for this current uh, set, you want as many shock lands and check lands as possible. Um, and obviously, if you don't have enough copies of either of them, you just replace them with whatever, whatever uh, tap lands you need to. Preferably, you want to replace them with the tap lands from N20 that gain you life, because uh, that life definitely helps out a whole lot sometimes. Definitely ends up making a difference. All right now talking about the sideboard okay so the sideboard i have a very specific sideboard again the sideboard was kind of a shell off of esper but then i tuned it a little bit uh for what just guy control needed so we have two Takotli on our guard and i'm honestly contemplating taking out my x my extra Ixlon's binding and putting in a third honor guard as well just because the honor guard shuts down a huge portion of decks in the format right now um so just to give an example oh well, just like just to read it honor guard is a two mana cost creature it's a one three creature and it has the ability creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger it is a huge counter to so many creature decks in the format okay let me just go through some examples let's pull up the the meta listing okay all right so right now Let's see. Uh, what are some good ones? Let's pull up the most obvious one, which to me is Teamer Elementals. Okay. Teamer Elementals is all about spamming as much elementals as possible to get their ETB effects. All right. Uh, most notably because of Ryzen Reef. Ryzen Reef is probably the most broken card, or not broken card, but it's one of the most, like, one of the best cards from N20 uh, printed at the moment. All right, and as soon as they have Rise and Reef on the field, like if they're if they're given a single turn of uh, Rise and Reef living, chances are the elemental elemental deck will end up going absolutely nuts. They'll just start comboing off, and you might not be able to come back. Okay, typically, typically. Okay, um, even though I don't have any copies of Honor Guard, I'm still able to deal deal with it very easily just because of all the removal in the deck. Uh, but Honor Guard helps shut that down. It shuts down Omnath. Oh, I'm not that It shuts down Omnath. I think it, uh, let's see, yeah. It shuts down all of the elementals, 
those like five mana cost elementals that came in M20 shuts those down. Uh, let's see. It shuts down a good portion of elementals, essentially. Okay, a good portion of them. Uh, yeah, All right. Let's see. Oh, it shuts down uh, Golgari mid-range too. Go through that. All right, so for example, um, all those cards that explore, all those merfolk that explore, they can't explore now because their trigger is canceled. Okay, can't be activated. Uh, let's see. Meaning that Walker can't get activated. Uh, G Ranger doesn't work. Uh, Ravenous Chupacabra doesn't work. Uh, that doesn't count. Um, but yeah, a bunch of the problem cards in the deck just don't work. So you don't have to worry about those. Uh, let's see. What other creature deck? Um, a lot of those cards you'll just end up seeing thrown in there here and there throughout the format. I think it does. I think it affects vampires too. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Does it? Let's see. No. Problem. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, it it doesn't affect uh, vampires, white black. Vampires. But yeah, it essentially shuts down a good portion of the creature decks you would typically see, uh, in ranked right now or in, in you know in competitive games. All right, so we have two copies of that in there, and in terms of sideboarding, you would uh, anytime you bring in creatures from the sideboard, you would typically swap out elite guard mage for whatever those creatures are on the sideboard. Sideboard. So elite guard mage will end up being swapped out for. Uh, honor guard or murmuring mystic depending on what the enemy is playing okay uh if they're playing something like aggro you would typically throw in the it depends on what type of aggro if they're playing like yeah it just depends on, on the type of aggro they're playing if they're playing like a lot of burn or whatever you might want the, you want to keep the elite guard mage in the deck uh, but if they're playing like a bunch of like small weenie character creatures Murmuring Mystic instead, just because you can actually create blockers much more easily and also kill uh, their creatures because they'll typically only have like one toughness. Uh, so Murmuring Mystic is right there. Uh, if they're playing aggro as well, I'll typically have def I'll throw in the extra copy, definite clearing. Uh, but let's see. Yeah. Uh, Aether Gust. If they're playing like some form of a green deck, uh, such as like Teamer Elementals, for example, or some maybe like Gruel deck or whatever. Uh, I would typically take out Dovin's Veto for Aether Gust instead. Uh, one, like I mentioned before, one of the main things or main cards that tends to gave uh, my deck a bit of trouble was Nissa, just because of the fact there's no, there aren't really many cards that directly do anything to green cards in the format right now. Let me pull Nissa up. Walker. This Nessa, okay. Uh, this Nessa is the one that's probably gonna end up getting you a little bit of pr uh, pressure. Uh, you can still deal with it. Uh, and I've won quite many games against her. Uh, and Aether Guts definitely helps out. So that way if they, they cast Aether Guts, you're just like, nope. If you notice they have Chandra in their deck though. If you notice they have Chandra in their deck. Let's say you're also playing against a uh, another uh, control deck who's playing this Chandra, Awakened Inferno, having Aether Gust in the deck helps out. Because that way, because she can't, because Chandra can't be countered, but Aether Gust doesn't counter it. It just bounces it back to their deck uh, instead. So being able to be like, nope, is a nice tempo play. All right. Um, and depending on the situation, they might choose to just put it on the bottom of the deck too, which just helps you out. So Aether Gust is there to help take care of those few problem cards uh that you might struggle against uh okay so like i mentioned before against uh against control against something that's not like a creature deck that you notice they're running those problem cards in instead you would take out uh removal so then okay let me i guess let me go through the deck the cards you will most uh most often take out the most when making swaps with your sideboard are going to be those cards okay uh you swap out search for Ascanta. If you're fighting against a, uh... actually no, no, I lied. Okay, if you're fighting against an aggro deck, 
You swap out Dovin's Veto. And what was it? Yeah. So you swap out Dovin's Veto and Ixalan's Binding for uh, Deafening Clarion and Essence Scatter. Okay. Or depending on the aggro deck, you can also do to call the Honor Guard instead of Essence Scatter. Uh, but I typically like to do Essence Scatter. Let's see. Uh, against a control deck, I mostly take out, I tend to take out Cleansing Nova and Deafening Clarion from the deck. Okay. That's what I take out just because they're not really playing creatures. So I take them out. Uh, and what I replace those with, I usually end up replacing, I replace the Cleansing Novas with three copies of Narset, and I replace the Deafening Clarions with two copies, two extra copies of Dovin's Vita. So essentially what will end up happening is that I basically have like four different Planeswalkers in the deck against Control and the Post sideboard. Uh, so we'll have three copies of Teferi, three copies of Chandra. Teferi shuts down their uh, instant speed counter uh, magic play. Uh, Chandra helps apply plush pressure on opponent and on their planeswalkers. Helps kill like their Teferi a lot easier. Uh, I'll have my Narset to help me dig and shut down their extra draw power, their draw engines from their uh, like their Teferis and stuff. Um, on top of fact, I'll have my Chandra in the deck, my big my big Chandra that can't be countered and is ultimately my win condition. Okay, can kill Planeswalkers on her own with their minus X and is my win condition at the same time. So that is a uh, against control. That's you'll be they'll be fighting against four Planeswalkers. <laughs> Two of them are red and. Uh, are going to be applying pressure to them, and two of them are blue that are going to make their life as a control player a living hell. Uh, on top of that, you have four copies of Dovin's Veto in the deck, so you can just counter most, almost anything they cast, and you'll have Sinister Sabotage for, anim, uh, for extra counter magic on top of uh, just in case they happen to sideboard in or have something in the deck that you weren't expecting. Uh, that you can counter, like maybe maybe they have they threw in more like features, or they threw in an extra nickel bolus or something. I don't know. You can at least counter it with sinister sabotage, and it gives you a little bit extra dig. Uh, let's see. Against what is it? Uh, so I explain these a little bit. Explain these. Explain these. Yeah, for the most part, it's it's not the most complicated thing in the world. Uh, the cyborg is pretty much there just in case, depending on what the enemy is running. If they're playing control, you're pretty much taking out the board wipes and you're swapping in Narsa and Dovin's Veto. If you're playing against anything that's not control, you basically sideboard in almost anything else, <laughs> depending on the situation. If it's a bunch of, uh, if it's like mono red uh, aggro, for example, which is a bunch of small little weenies that are trying to kill you really quickly, you put in cards like Deafening, Deafening Clarion uh, and uh, Essence Scatter. Maybe Mur Murmuring Mystic. Depends. Depends on how, you, how you're how you feeling about their deck and whether or not you think you need Murmuring Mystic or would you rather like uh, keep the life gain and the card draw from Elite Guard Mage. Okay? Either one would work. Uh, one of the cool... One thing worth noting is that one of the cool things about Murmuring Mystic is that it does not die to your... when If you happen to use Deafening Clarion. So you can still use Deafening Clarion's board wipe while Mystic is on the field and Mystic will still live. It'll kill all your birds, but at least your Mystic still lives. Uh, so it's just it's just something nice noting. Uh, let's see. Alright, so that was the sideboard. Let me go ahead and talk about the different interactions currently against the most common decks you'll fight against. Alright, so let me pull it up. Okay, right now, like I mentioned before, against Mono Red. Mono Red typically just a, likes to sideboard a bunch of a uh, bunch of extra creatures. Typically, okay. So you typically take out the Dovin's Veto. Oh, you guys can't see that. Uh, so you guys typically take out the Dovin's Veto. For uh, like I mentioned before, you take out the Dovin's Veto 
or and Ixalan's Binding for like Essence Scatter and an extra uh, Definite Clarion, for example. Um, otherwise, the deck can more or less stay the same. Maybe a Maroon Mystic if you feel like it's necessary. All right, against Esper Control, you take out the Definite Clarion. You take out the Board Wipes and you swap in uh, the Narset and extra Dovin's Veto. Uh, if you want to, you could also potentially uh, put in that extra Ixalan's Binding too, uh, in order to help guarantee help help make their de- uh, make yeah make their life a- even more of a living hell because you can uh, you can exile some of their Planeswalkers with Ixalan's Binding and make it so they can't really play most of their most needed cards in the deck. Uh, they don't have much removal against Ixalan's Binding. They don't, there's, there's only like one or two cards in their deck that can uh, handle it, such as D-Spark. So if you use Ixalan's Binding on a card... Let me pull up it as per tempo. If they use uh, D-Spark on a card like Ixalan's Binding, and your Ixalan's Binding is on like their Baby Teferi, for example, and you just want their Baby Teferi out of the way... Uh, you can s- try and save your Dovin's Vetoes for the D-Spark, for example. Okay, uh, let's see. They only have... Yeah, they pretty much only have two cards, or three cards in the entire deck that can actually remove Ixalan's Binding. That is... Or actually, no, you can say technically four. Uh, both Teferis, so Baby Teferi can bounce it back to your hand, which isn't very much use, to be honest, because you could just recast it. Uh... Big Teferi, which can uh, put it three cards on the top of your deck, I think it is. Yeah. All right, so delaying it. They have Ugin, who can destroy it. And then they have D-Spark, okay? They tip most, typically, they only have, like, will only have one copy of Ugin, most likely. Uh, many decks you fight against right now competitively are no, more or less almost exact copies of MTG Goldfish. You'll find a few people here and there who modify it a little bit to their tastes uh, but a good portion of people just kind of copy and paste their decks from ntg goldfish so uh you have a lot more aggression compared to esper control for them to be able to keep up uh, on top of fact you can actually reuse a lot of your instant sorceries too from your grave because of uh chandra acolyte of flame that i i don't think i've i don't think i've had a single loss against esper control yet with jeskai control Okay, so against Simic Nexus. Against Simic Nexus, okay, this is, uh, in case you're not aware, Simic Nexus is basically uh, Wilderness Reclamation with uh, Nexus of Fate. So they just create this loop of taking infinite number of turns until they sooner or later get a creature on the field that they can just beat you to death infinitely. Uh, that's how they win. So what you do here, one of the best cards here is the fact that Cleansing Nova will destroy enchantments that's the big thing if you destroy their uh wilderness reclamation that's that's the easiest way to basically just destroy the deck um it's oh i forgot the cover previously but i forgot to mention that i also have one copy of blast zone in uh as a land too just in case that helps take care of uh situations like this where they might have like wilderness reclamation so you can just blow up all of their reclamations if needed uh, yeah. Without Reclamation, they can't do much. You can also Ixlan's Binding their Reclamation. They can't cast anymore, so they, they more or less just end up giving up. Because <laughs> now they can't take F- infinite turns anymore. Um, at least not in a row. So, uh, obviously if you counterspell Nexus of Fate 2, that hurts them. Um, but yeah, it's it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Let's see. Uh, Simic Flash. This one has just started popping up a little bit recently. That I've noticed. At least on Magic Arena. So in terms of this card. Uh, wait, like Teferi is great against this deck. Because they can't flash anything in then. <laughs> Which kind of ruins the whole point of the deck. <laughs> Teferi just screws over this deck. Uh... But you have a good amount of removal that you can pretty much kill almost every single card that pops up. All, almost all of the creatures that they put in here. You have to be careful of the counter magic though just because they do have a, a decent amount of counter magic. But again, Teferi literally screws over this entire deck. 
uh, and you have so much removal as well that it's not, it, it doesn't end up being a problem. I haven't really had an issue against it yet. Uh, one of the most annoying cards or decks is Boros, uh, the Feather decks. Feather decks are probably going to be the number one or one of the number one decks that will end up giving you or that you might struggle against the most strictly because of the ridiculous combo between feather the redeemed and god's willing the fact that you can god's willing a creature while feather the redeemed is on the field and they always get god's willing back it's is ridiculous um it's so I almost want to say it's broken just because of the fact you're you can always give protection to a creature. Okay, so like if you cast removal on their feather of the redeemed, for example, you cast D Spark on it or not D Spark. I don't know. You cast Chandra's Triumph on it. You cast Lightning Strike, whatever, Lava Coil. Uh, I don't know. Unsummon anything, any form of removal on their creature. They just go eh. God's unwilling on the color of your removal doesn't work anymore and i get god's willing back to my hand at the end of the turn like it's like <laughs> it's incredibly annoying to deal with uh one of the main ways to deal with this deck is quite literally teferi uh and trying to play around their mana cost okay you have, you have to kind of hope that they uh they tap out so that way that's the turn you actually use removal to take out feather once feather is out of the equation uh, out of the equation you don't have to worry as much okay but once feather is on the field oh my god the game becomes an absolute it, it's so it's it's super annoying it's super annoying to fight against so feather is probably the one that you have to watch out for the most just because it's it's kind of hard to interact with with that specific interaction uh mono blue tempo is honestly very similar to like mono mono red just it's just slightly different um, instead of like outlet aggro I want, they're just kind of killing you over time with these small itty bitty aggro uh, creatures, which isn't a big problem because of the fact that you have so much board wipes and removal in the deck that they can't counterspell everything. So sooner or later, you will kill all their creatures and they're just kind of sitting here like, well, gotta wait till my next creature pops up uh, that, I, that I can, you know, top, draw, uh, top deck it. All right. Jun Dinosaurs, I've seen this popping up quite a bit recently. I haven't had a problem against this just because it's like the 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 main board of Jeskai Control is built against creature decks, okay? Uh, but it's also really, it's still really good against Control too. Like you've noticed in the sideboard, I only swapped out a handful of cards with my sideboard against Control. That is it, all right? The deck is mostly built against creatures though. Uh, and can kill pretty much everything that Jund Dinosaurs uh, busts out against you. All right. Uh, even the big dudes like Galta, Primal Hunter, you can eggs out with Ixlon's Binding. Uh, Cleansing Nova is really good in this situation because you can just be like, whoop, kill everything on their board, even the big dudes, so it doesn't end up being a problem. Uh, yeah. So... I think I, I hope you're noticing a trend here. It's it's more or less almost the same exact thing throughout all the other decks. Okay, uh, in terms of what you end up doing against these decks versus what you sideboard, it's almost always the same exact things. If they're running creatures, if they're running creatures, run more board wipes and some counter spells. Boom. Okay, they're running control. Take out the take out the creature removal and instead put in the uh, put in more control, like Narset and Dovin's Veto. Maybe Ixalan's Binding, okay? It's very simple. It's very simple. Just swap out for what you think is needed. But other than that, I am very happy with this deck so far. It is very good. It's been very consistent so far. I highly recommend it. I, I am pretty convinced that this is probably the best deck in the format right now, if not one of the best. But other than that, I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below uh, on what you think I could be able to do to either improve the deck or uh, maybe things I haven't thought of in terms of interactions with other decks, okay? But other than that, my name is Brian from KHUX Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.